I think it's safe to say we're in the dog days of summer. It's been 90 degrees here every single day um, for what seems like forever. Um, not a big fan, but speaking of dog days, uh, we're actually got our first dog item uh, for the website and we're calling it the Bow Wow Cookie Jar uh, slash gift box, whatever you want to use it for. And it's essentially a little uh, cookie jar that is a, a dog. <laughs> um, and that's what we're going to put together today. So uh, we're going to begin by putting together the actual base first. And I've got the two sections required to do that here in front of me. We'll do one at a time. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. As you can see, I've already pre-folded everything. You definitely want to make sure that you fold everything, all the score, everything at the score marks, um, as well as the tabs. And what you'll notice on this one here in four sections, there's a tiny little tab here. We're actually not even going to be putting glue on it. It's more or less just to, uh, well, it's just so that there's not a gap there. It really is not structurally necessary. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is just do your best to get that folded. And what I did was I kind of folded one of the layers back a little bit. And then from the uh, opposite side, so the little tab is here. I did it from this side here. I kind of put my finger, because this side here is smooth, I use that as kind of a guide as to how far I need to fold it. There's a score mark there, um, but it's just one score mark. Couldn't do the whole thing, otherwise it would fall off completely. Just do your best to fold that over uh, as, as well as you can. And don't worry too much. Uh, well, you're not gonna have to worry about gluing anything. So anyway, uh, we can begin just getting these sections glued together and one thing i do want to point out is that this longer section here at the top that's going to fold in there's going to be a valley fold here where all of these are mountain folds essentially okay so let's get started here i'm going to start with these tabs here and again you can skip that tiny little one so we'll put glue on this section here and I'm just going to do one tab at a time, just so that well, just, I don't recommend doing more than one at a time. Otherwise, you may end up with something that's misshaped. Okay, so first tab, a little bit of glue. I kind of dabbed it a little bit to thin it out and make it a little tacky. Okay, give that a second to set. And I didn't. I was trying to move on way too quick. So don't do that. Try that one more time. Again, just get that nice and aligned. It's going to naturally be curving inward. You can see how it slopes in. So make sure that you get these two sections lined up correctly. And be patient, uh, especially with this one here. Okay, and actually while I'm holding that, I can bring this back a little bit to expose the next tab. And... We'll get some glue on that tab and bring that back in behind the next section. Get that lined up and give that a press and hold it in place. Okay, so essentially uh, we're going to be doing this on the top sections as well as the bottom sections. Now these tabs here on the bottom, we're not going to actually glue, there's no tabs there. Uh, to glue them together. This is the base and we're going to put that together at the end. Okay, so now onto the top tab, which is the largest tab. I'll just hit that with my finger a little bit, make it nice and tacky and press and hold, get it nice and aligned. And that's one, well, one half of one section all complete. This is the, what I would call the Zen portion of this assembly. It's a, uh, it's almost like, you know, it's just, you don't really need to think too much. It's just one step at a time. Okay, so we're gonna move down to the bottom of this section now and get our glue on that tab. Again, we're skipping that one there. 
that essentially doesn't have anything. And just make sure you get that nice and lined up. Then give that a press, hold. And then while you're holding that, you can pull that back to expose the next tab and start getting your glue on that tab. So we're kind of working on two things at once in a way. Tuck that back in, get it lined up, make sure that you're getting that nice curve there. Okay. And there we go. Okay. And again, these tabs here on the bottom, we're going to leave those alone. Those are for the actual base base, the bottom. Okay. All right. So one section complete, and this is where we're not doing anything different at all doing the same exact process. I'm going to start at the top. We're going to skip that tiny little tab. Don't really need to do anything with that. Get your glue on there, tuck it behind. And again, just make sure that you are lining this up correctly. It should be curving inward. Use this section here to guide, to guide you as far as the alignment goes. And just press and hold that in place. There we go. You can peel that back. That one should be good. There we go. So, so we haven't really done any pet related items. Uh, as part of this bundle, we've got a little freebie. That will be a card and, you know, not to sound macabre or anything, but um, obviously these items can be used to celebrate our pets and also, uh, well, if you want to make someone feel better, if maybe they lost a pet, this could be a really nice gift to give, uh, especially, especially the card because we know that um, that's not a fun thing to talk about because I've lost many pets in my days and um, man, it's not, it's not fun, not easy. Okay, so moving on to the bottom section here. And again, just make sure that you're getting it nice and lined up, that it's curving in correctly. And press that into place. like that. And then once we get this section done, we're going to take and attach the other half of this and then just kind of continue on until until we've finished making oops, finished making the uh, the entire structure. We've got some nice panels that are going to go over that over this section to make it look nice and round. Okay, there you go. You can see how you can see that curve. You're working towards achieving that curve there. I want it to look like a nice jar. I think this one's actually maybe a little bit smaller than our prototype. Okay, so that looks good. I would maybe just give it a second here to really set before we start adding the next section just so that we don't accidentally pull anything apart. So while that's happening, I'm just going to go over a few things with you here. Um, these are the panels that are going to go on the structure that we're building right now. And you'll notice that we have markers on these. <clears throat> the markers are to help you with the positioning of the little spots that we have for our little doggy. And it is going to be important to pay attention to the little cutouts here, okay? Um, not only do we have little Roman numerals, there's a Roman numeral one there, and next to it, to the left, is the letter T, okay? T indicating top. If it's upside down, then you're looking at it, this is the bottom, this is the top. If the letter T is right side up, 
then you have the top in the correct spot, okay? And here is our Roman numeral two, and there's the letter T. So this is the top, so the T is right side up. Your third panel, panel number three, does not have any markers on it at all. This is the one that goes on the back of our doggy, so there's no markers. Number four has a marker, and it's uh, four marks in the shape of a circle or a square. Um, we do have, actually, let me see if I can bring it up here while that's drying. This might actually make things easier to understand. I don't know why I didn't do this for, uh, for our kitty. Hold on a second, let me see here. And there it is. Okay, so this is our numbering system. So you can see Roman numeral one equals one, Roman numeral two equals two, Roman numeral three equals three. Uh, four is four marks in the shape of a circle. Five is the circle with the four marks with one more, and then two more, three more, and then eight is two circles. Okay, we don't, we're not getting up to eight. We'll only be up to six, which is the four hash marks in a circle, and then the two. Okay, now this is something you can actually access on our website under the Dreaming Tree Help section, and it's called the Dreaming Tree Numbering System. Okay, and that's where you can find this diagram should you need it. Uh, but anyway, so number three doesn't have any markers and doesn't have the three Roman numerals. Number four obviously has the four hash marks in a circle and there's a letter T next to it indicating this is the top. Here's number five with the four hash marks in a circle and the one next to it, the T, indicating this is the top. Because again, if the T is upside down, then you don't have it right side up. If you're looking at the T, and the T is upside down, this is the top. You need to flip it over. And then of course, number six, the circle with the four hash marks and then two individual Roman numeral ones. And this is our top, okay? So that should explain, um, well, how this all goes together. And it doesn't matter where we put these on the actual structure since this is all the same. It's just what does matter is making sure that we do this chronologically, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around. Okay, and then uh, this thing here, this is for the lid, and there's no T for top or bottom since it only goes on one way, but there is a numbering system, and you also wanna make sure that we follow that as well. So back to this, okay. Let's grab our other section here, and you wanna make sure that when we join these two, that you don't join it incorrectly, and you really can't because if you do it this way, you'll have two tabs kind of poking at each other. So you gotta rotate it this way. You wanna make sure that the top, which is this section here, remember our valley fold is on top, and we're gonna join this section to this section. And I think I'm gonna begin by anchoring it to the center tab here, okay? Because that is going to allow me to be the most accurate because it has the most, um, most surface area. And let me get some glue all the way out to that very edge so that we have a nice, clean connection there. Okay, so we're gonna grab this other piece and you can see you've got those horizontal score marks there. That should make it fairly easy to ensure proper alignment. And there you can see how these score marks all match up nicely. I've got it nice and centered. I'm actually gonna put this down on my surface and press down to really get that glue in there. And I'm gonna be patient with this for just a few moments because this is taking on a large load here with relatively large load based on how much weight it's holding. And we don't want that ripping apart. So be patient with that. While we're waiting on that, I'll talk about the other things here. Here's uh, the little doggy's ears. You'll notice that for the ears, I actually inked both sides uh, just because we're gonna be doing some training to it and both sides are gonna be partially visible. So we did that. Uh, we've got our tail here, two layers, which we'll glue together. Um, and then the rest of these elements here are the little spots and that's we have the markers for that. Here's his little mouth, his tongue and We've got a nice little collar, 
there's a gold piece that goes on the collar and then his little doggy tag is a dog bone three layers there we'll assemble that and then of course we've got our lid which we'll put together the process is going to be pretty much just like the base uh, it's just going to go a little bit quicker since there's less surface area to play with okay so back to this now we've got this anchored and all we're going to do is just continue on like we did in the previous uh, section by gluing one tab at a time here and now this one we are going to glue this is usually where we have that little that little uh, tab that we didn't need to glue but since these are separate pieces we do have that there so make sure you get that glued down okay give that a quick press i'm gonna peel this back to make way for my next tab again make sure that you are following the natural curve here. It's kind of sloping inward. Okay. There we go. And while that's drying, we kind of peel that back. Get our glue on the next tab. And get that nice and lined up. Just like that. Press and hold that tab. Kind of on the home stretch with this. And then we'll just put some panels on. And before you know it, oh, I kind of jumped the gun there. There we go. Fill that back and then get the lip, the lid lip section in place make sure that's accurately aligned and press and hold and then we'll move down to the bottom and just a few more times again if uh, if you understand the concept at this point feel free to pause me and move along you don't have to listen to me blab the entire time while you're making this and then i can always just meet when you start seeing me as you're scrubbing through the video when you see me grab these um, that's going to be the next section of the assembly so you can you know resume watching the tutorial there okay so now we're on the bottom half here putting glue on the first tab getting it nice and aligned press and hold one other thing you may also want to resume play for is when i or connect this to make it uh, one solid piece all the way around but that in itself is not is not anything difficult to do and I just pulled that apart on accident and I don't know if that's I'm gonna have to re-glue that that's what happens when I try to do two things at once and I'm not totally in my zen there we go all right I'm gonna try to hold that in place and I'm gonna have to wait I don't want that to pull apart. Okay. See, and I didn't fold the score line very well, so it's making it a little more difficult to move it out of the way. But that seemed to work. I gave it enough time to dry so it didn't tear or pull apart like it did the first time. All right, so I'm going to keep her moving here. There we go. And the last tab here. I'll apply my glue while I'm holding the other tab in place. And then get that aligned. And hold that in place. You can move this tab out of the way if you need to. And there we go. Okay, so now when we move into this section here, again, starting from the middle, there's that one little tab that you really don't need. So you can skip that and move on to the second one. I'm going to go up to the top here and start with this tab. Just go easy on the glue here too. Um, each, tab, each tab is doing a lot of work here. This is already joined, so that's holding these two sections together very well you don't need to overdo it on the glue for this thing to be structurally sound and 
actually if you do use too much you're going to spend a lot a lot of time waiting for these tabs to connect and set and that's not really what you want to do how you want to spend your day you want to craft and not sit there and watch paint dry essentially so go easy on the glue and make this process more fun and more efficient so you can get to that end result a lot sooner and it's also going to be a cleaner result because you're not going to have glue shooting all over the place and oozing out and all that good stuff or not so good stuff I should say all right last tab here up at the top for the lip of the opening get that in place and that's starting to look good all right so once we get that we're going to go back down to the bottom do the bottom two tabs again because we're going to skip that first little tiny one so let's do that let me move these out of the way it's okay if you fold them like that again this is what i call the bones of our dog all of this for the most part is going to be covered up you're not really going to see much of it at all but it needs a structure and that's what we're building right now okay so we got that nice and aligned and while I'm holding that in place, make sure that it's nice and aligned, I can go ahead and begin applying my glue on the next tab, like that, and pull that in. Make sure that you're following that curve, and just hold that in place, and there we go. So I've got one more, one more section to do here, and then ultimately we're going to join it all together so back to the top remember you can skip that first tab and move this out of the way for a second and you can see that first tab here get some glue on that thin it out if necessary okay and get that nice and aligned like so Do it. Move on to the next one and bring that in. Follow that curve. There we go. And pull this back. Great. Oh, not great. You see what happened there? You just got to find that right pace to work at. And unfortunately, there's a lot of variables that can change what that pace is. Uh, what I mean by that is sometimes, especially right now in the summer, uh, actually I think the problem occurs more in the winter when the, well no, it's actually in the summer, the glue just doesn't dry as fast because of all the humidity in the air. I do have air conditioning in here, but even that sometimes doesn't get all the moisture out. So it could take a little bit longer for things to set. And we're not talking minutes, we're, you know, talking uh, a variable of a few seconds, but you'd be surprised how much air temperature does play a role in just about everything. Okay, so back to the bottom. Okay, we're gonna skip that one little nub there and go down to the second tab, flatten that out a bit, and get that nice and lined up. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of tucking the next layer or the next section under my thumb so that it doesn't get in the way, so that while I'm holding this section down, I can, you know, this tab is available for me to actually apply glue to. and make the process, well, kind of expedite the process a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's the last one there. And now all we have to do is just connect the rest of this together, these two sections. So before we do that, I'm gonna let this sit for just a, a few seconds. Okay, and there's our bottom. We'll do that last. You can see how that's starting to look. And there's the top. Okay, 
So I'm gonna let that set for just a few moments and then we'll go ahead and put it all together. Okay, so we're going to, at this point, close this up, make it all one piece. And just like we did when we joined the two sections together, uh, we're gonna start with the longest tab here. So get your glue on this tab. Get that glue out to the very edge so that everything is nice and seamless. I'm gonna paint that glue out. I got a little, a little more than I needed there. I'll wipe some of that off. There we go. And I'm gonna grab the other half here and just get that aligned as accurately as we can. Again, using those those horizontal score marks as our guides to ensure that we've got it nice and lined up. I might need to nudge it over to the left just a bit. There we go. And I can actually put that down on my surface right now and press down from the inside to really get that to stick. And there we have it. Okay, so now all that's left to do <clears throat> is just close up the rest of these tabs. Now, um, we're not gonna be able to fold this over to make room for things. So uh, I'm gonna start by actually, let me put it in a position where you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna work from the inside here as far as applying our glue. So you can fold these tabs over and get them ready. You can see that there, We've got the four tabs there. And all I'm gonna do is just apply my glue from the inside. Let me do it real quick and then I'll show you what I'm doing here. And I might just do two at a time just to make it easier. You can see those two tabs with the little dots of glue on there. I'm not overly concerned about making sure that I spread that glue out at this point. It's just a lot easier if we just work while the glue is still wet and get those two tabs in place. Make sure that they're nice and aligned. There we go. And give that a second to set. Don't jump the gun too soon here. Okay. And then that just leaves these last two tabs. Again, I'm gonna work from the inside. Just move those two tabs out of the way and apply my glue. Now this top one here, I'm gonna make sure that I get that glue all the way out to the very edges because that part is gonna be visible later on. Okay, just do your best to get that nice and aligned. And then the top one here for the lip. Make sure you get that nice and accurately aligned. Press and hold, there we go. And then we just need to do the same thing on the bottom here. And we're in good shape. Okay, all right, so again, I'm gonna work from the inside here. I've got a total of three tabs left. You can see one, two, three. I'm gonna fold those over so I can get my glue on them. And I'm just gonna do a little dot of glue. I'm gonna do all three. You can do one at a time if you'd like. I think, I think these are gonna be just fine. So I've got my dot of glue on there. Give that a press. Dot of glue, give that a press. Give that a press. I had a little bit of a little bit of glue squirt out there, but that's okay. It's just one side, and most of this is going to be covered up anyway, so it doesn't really make a huge difference. There we go. Okay. Oh, wouldn't you know? I'd say that's probably probably the most time-consuming, tedious, and maybe the most challenging part of this assembly. Although it's really not that tough. Okay. So now here's the bottom. You're gonna look for these two pieces here. You'll notice that one of them has the letter L uh, cut into it. That's our liner, that's gonna go inside. This is the actual bottom bottom, and that's gonna go here. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna anchor, we're gonna anchor this to one side first, just to kind of set the tone for the rest of this to get into place, like so. Okay, so pull that up and grab this piece here and do your best to get that nice and centered. 
pretty much butting it right up against the little score marks there without going over. Make sure it's centered as well. And you can put it down on your table and press down to use the table as a little extra leverage. That'll help it dry a lot quicker. Okay, and that looks really nice right there. You can see where that hinge is. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna apply glue to the remaining tabs here and close this up. And don't be afraid to go a little extra heavy on the glue here since there are a total of five more and we're gonna need a little bit of time to spread that glue out to the edges. We don't want it to dry too quickly. Just like that. There we go. And get that glue out. Just want that bottom to be nice and crisp. Just like that. Okay, so now what you wanna do, flare these up a little bit. And as we close this, focus on aligning it with this side here first. Because once you get that centered and aligned, the rest of it usually nicely falls into place. You may need to, may need to kind of nudge things, give it a little bit of a squeeze or push in to ensure that everything aligns nicely. That looks good. I'm gonna flip this over and then push down from the inside, working that working that little seam there, the very edge of that. Just kind of pressing down just to make sure that everything looks nice and crisp. Let's take a look at our work here. Going all the way around, that actually came out almost perfect. This side here maybe just needs an extra push. And if not, we can always paint a little extra glue in that little section. But no, that turned out nice, okay? So this other piece that looks like this, this is gonna go inside. So what you wanna do is take a little bit of glue and just throw it around the perimeter and then maybe just a little bit inside, okay? And then take this one with the, the one that has the little L on it and drop it right in the bottom. There we go. Get it nice and centered. And just run your finger around the perimeter where, you've, where you have the glue. And let that set. It's gonna make this thing uh, a little bit more sturdy. Especially the bottom. Okay. There we go. All right, so structure is pretty much done here. And again, there's no numbering system on this, but there is a number, numbering system on this one. We already talked about that. Okay, so what we wanna do is grab piece number one. It's got the Roman numeral one. And the letter T is right side up, indicating that this is the top. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're going to glue this to these sections here, like so. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to make this nice and round. Okay, so starting with piece number one, uh, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take and glue, uh, we're gonna put enough glue on this panel to, well, just enough glue to cover this area here. Okay, so we're not gonna put glue on these sections here, just the top. So uh, let's see, what is that? Where's my ruler here? just to be a little more precise here. It's just about almost a half an inch or so. So let's do that. Let's get about a half an inch of glue on the top section here. 
and you want to pull that glue all the way out to the very edge there. Okay, make sure that the, make sure the T, the letter T, is in the correct orientation so that we have the top in the right spot. And you're gonna pop that on there and you want it to basically be butting up to that little corner where the lip of the lid begins. And you also wanna make sure that you have it nice and centered as well. And while you're doing that, maybe pull it down and just make sure that it in fact is in the right spot. It should meet up nicely on the bottom, but definitely make sure you're holding this in place. Now this paper that I'm using is like an opal gemstone and it's, it's a little bit thicker than the standard cardstock that you guys might be using. Um, so what I actually did was I trained the very ends of this. Uh, I don't think you're gonna need to do that with AC cardstock or your standard uh, 80 pound cardstock. This is, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's actually heavier, but whatever they did to create this little sheen on here, um, it does in fact make it a little less malleable. Okay, and I did have to kind of train that a little bit. I'll show you that on the next one. I'll show you what I did in case you run into this issue. It's not really an issue, it's just we want this to be, we want this to look correct aesthetically based on how it was designed. And sometimes we need to do a few things, a few extra things to make that happen. Okay, so I've got glue on, again, about, about half an inch. And then I spread that glue out to the very edge. And I'm gonna hold that in place like so until that's nice and set. And you can see the nice shape that we're getting there. And had I not trained the paper, I think it probably uh, would be bulging out a little bit more here. And ideally, we want it to bulge as little as possible when we're applying these panels. Be patient, make sure that it fully sets, okay? Okay, so this is piece number one. We're gonna grab piece number two now. And again, you wanna make sure that you're doing this in chronological order. And that's just gonna go right next to it like so. Now you can see, without training it, how much it bulges out. And this paper is a little bit thicker than the AC cardstock that we used on our, um, on our prototype. So what I did was I took a, this is a 3 8 inch dowel, and I placed it right about here, just on my table, nice and flat, I'm pushing down, and I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. And you can see what happened there. See what it did to the paper? It kind of just gave it that little curve that we need right about there. Okay, so there's really no science to it. We're just kind of breaking up those fibers a little bit and hopefully ending up with something like this. And again, if you're using AC cardstock, I don't know that this is gonna be necessary. So uh, use it, use that tip if you think you need it based on the weight of your paper. All right, so again, this is piece number two, Roman numeral two with the letter T. The T is right side up, indicating that I have the orientation correct. And we'll go ahead and get this one glued down now. So again, do about a half an inch. Get that glue out to the very, very end. We want that to be nice and flat and flush. Pop that right into that little crevice there where the score line meets the beginning of the lip. Make sure it's centered. And then as you're putting it in place, just kind of pull it down and see how it's all looking. And that, that works for me. There's not that much of a gap there. As long as we have the illusion of roundness, I'm happy with that. Be patient while that sets, obviously. Okay, and then we can just take it and hold it like this. Get our glue on the bottom section and paint that glue out to the very end, very edge of the bottom. And just pull that down nice and easy. And just make sure that you get it as close to aligned with the very bottom as you can. 
You can kind of pull it taut. There we go. That's going to look nice. There we go. And just be patient while that sets. Last thing we need right now is for one of these panels to come popping off. It's a cute little project. Okay. All right. So I'm pretty confident we can move on here. There we go. Okay, so piece number three now. Now remember this piece number three doesn't actually have any indicators on it since this is going to be the back. I think that's the, no, is it the back? Uh, one, two, three. Let me double check here. This is four, five, six, yeah. Okay, so piece number three doesn't have any markers on it, which is fine. Okay, again, I'm going to do this just because my paper is way thicker than the standard AC card stock that we usually use. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve at the ends. And this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter what's what on piece number three. So I'm going to start with applying my glue on about a half, half inch, inch or so at the top. Get that glue all the way out to the edges. Okay. And Right there, get it nice and centered, butting up to right about there where the little lip begins. And before it starts to dry too much, pull it down and just take a look at your work and make sure that you're happy with where it is. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay. And don't, don't rush this. This is the part you don't want to rush. Okay. And let's go another half inch and get that glue painted. There we go. And just pull that down nicely all the way to the bottom. Try to get that as flush as you can. There we go. And just hold that in place for just a moment. It's looking pretty good. I'd say that little gaps here are pretty consistent and that's the best we can ask for. Again, I think if you're using, um, if you're using AC cardstock, you probably won't get as much of a flare out like that. It'll probably be a little bit more, more flat, but either way, it's still going to look good. Okay. So make sure you find piece number four, the, make sure you have the T in the correct orientation. And again, I'm going to give this a little bit of a bend just to have it hug this piece a little bit better. There we go. And same process. Oops, let me do a little more glue there. There we go. That's nice. And just moving right along here. Same process. Make sure it's nice and centered. Nice and even with the previous layers. And as you get it into place, Pull that down, take a look at the bottom, make sure it matches up nicely at the bottom, and it does. That's looking good. Okay. So I guess at this point, um, I'm going to do this two more times. It is kind of repetitive, so if you want to pause me and just do it on your own. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is probably work on putting the embellishments on these sections, the little spots and whatever else we have. And then, uh, and then we'll probably do the lid last. So when you see me grabbing for these, you'll know to stop and pick up on the next section of the assembly. But everything down here is matching up nicely. So we know we've, we know, we know we're doing a good job here. And just be patient. We just have two more to go. 
And you can see how nice, look at the other camera angle, how nice it is turning out. Okay, and piece number five. Let me, let me fix that a little bit. And make sure that the T is in the correct orientation. And grab some glue there, paint that out. There we go. And get that in place. Nice and centered. Try to make sure that it's nice and aligned there. Um, there's going to be on the lid, we'll have a nice little collar element that if for some reason you're not completely accurate there, it'll cover it up for the most part. So don't worry too much about perfection. Do your absolute best. That's all you can do. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get, the better you're going to feel too. It really gets you into a Zen mode. Bring that down right to the bottom. Make sure that it's nice and centered there. That looks good. There we go. And just hold that down. We've got one more panel to go. And then we can give our doggy his little spots. That looks nice. Okay, all right, last one. Make sure that you have the correct orientation on the T. I'm going to do this real quick again. Again, you may not have to, because your paper is a little more flexible and malleable. Mine is not, we're using this, uh, let's see. It's made by Derice. It's an opal gemstone paper for this color. And it is definitely one of the thicker papers I've used. So I definitely need to definitely need to train that a little bit. I was just double checking to make sure that my T had the correct orientation. Get that nice and centered. That looks good. Let's check our work here at the bottom. Perfect. Okay, hold that in place, let that set, and then we'll get our bottom in place. And then I think the the lid's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit easier. It's smaller, easier to work with. I should go quicker too. Alright, last little section here. We got there we go. down make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom and that's it cool so there is that you can see it from this angle here looks really nice okay I think I could probably let that go now okay and there's side one two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now, uh, let's see, side one, where'd it go? That is side one, there it is, okay. So, for side one, you're gonna find this little piece here, okay, and that is gonna go, you're gonna just look for the little markers, and we will need to slightly train this just to give it a little bit of a curve since we're gluing it to a curved surface and you may need to train it um, a few different times like see down here I know I need to bend this in a little bit because that little section there is taking on or has more of a significant curve but that's where that one's going to go so I'm going to glue that there and I just kind of 
put it onto the surface and then based on what the curvature is in certain spots, just kind of adjusted it using a dowel or even your fingers, whatever it takes, and just kind of position it in between those little guides that we've created for you to get it in the right spot. Now technically, you know, we do this so that you can recreate the project as designed. I, I, honestly, you could, you can put these spots anywhere you want, but that's why the score marks are there to help you help you get an accurate reproduction. So it takes all the guesswork out. And it's just like a little puzzle. Okay, so there's our first little spot. That looks nice. Okay, now on panel one here, uh, we do have the little tag with our dog bone. That's going to go on this section here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to glue this pattern piece to our shadow layer. So go ahead and get your glue on this section here, like so. We'll glue this to the shadow layer. You can see that there is, in fact, a little bit of, whoops, uh-oh. Get out of here, glue. Usually if it doesn't set completely, you can rub it off. I got some glue on my finger there. Okay, so it's gonna be a small black section that is still gonna be kind of showing uh, just like that, okay? There we go. And then, whoops, maybe clean my Clean my little pad off here. Then we have a little gold piece that we're gonna glue on top of that pattern section there. Like so. That's just gonna go right there. Pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory as far as where that goes. And then once this is set, <clears throat> we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to kind of pull this back a little bit, train it back so it's curved like that, okay, because that's going onto a curved surface. And I believe that maybe it might help to kind of curve back just the top part of the bone a little bit like that. And obviously before we actually put it in place, we get a feel for if we need to do anything else to get that curvature correct. And I, don't, I, think, I think we nailed it. Okay, so let's get our glue on the back of this section here. And we'll get this glue down. And then we can move on to the next section, section two. Okay, let's just do your best to eye that to get it centered. I think that looks good right there. And just press and hold that in place. Now there's little areas where we're, we're putting this on a curve. I would maybe just give those areas a little extra love and, and just hold those down a little bit longer even though we did train it it still may have a tendency to pull off more than the areas where it is flat so that looks really good though okay there we go so he's coming together here we got one spot okay now we'll go over to section two and section two has uh, this spot here, okay? And it has a tiny little guy, which is just this guy here. And that's gonna go right here. And this one, I don't, I don't think we really need to do anything to this guy as far as training. So let's get our, let's get our glue on this and pop it into place. Just like that. And you want this black section to be flush with the top of the brown panel, like that. Black color is the worst to show glue, so be careful if you have gluey fingers and you're working with black paper. Okay, so the next section here is this little spot. And you can see that we have some markers there to help you with the placement. It's gonna go right about there. Okay, and I don't really think we need to 
do any training on this piece. We are going to have to just kind of hold the top and bottom down a little bit longer than the rest of it, but I don't really think we need to do much else. So again, just kind of use the little guides here to make sure that you get it in the right spot, get the spot in the right spot, and just press and hold that down. And you've definitely got enough fingers there to hold down all of these sections and make sure that they stay on nice and flush. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And that's going to be it for that section. Um, there's the next section, section three, doesn't actually have any spots on it. <clears throat> so we can skip that one. And then we've got the next piece that you're going to need is this piece. And there's, you'll notice there's a fold on this one. And that is because it spans and crosses over two sections. That looks nice. Okay, so there's the front. Make sure I got that right. Yep. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to skip section three. We're going to head over to section four and five. And that is going to look like this. Okay. So that's going to get glued on like so. This one's just kind of spanning two sections. This is where our tail is going to go as well. Let me clean this off. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side at a time here. So we'll get the first side in place. And there is a little guide here to help you make sure that you get it in the right spot. So use that guide to your benefit and make sure that where this little crease is, that fold, that that matches up with this seam. And just hold that in place. Make sure that that stays on there nicely. And then we'll just fold this over so we can get our glue on it and get that glued down. That's going to look nice. Okay, I think that's probably good enough for that section. We'll fold that over and get our glue. Just try to make sure you work that glue out to at least some of the perimeter here and there. It doesn't need to be the entire perimeter. Okay, and just fold that over. That should pretty much just fall into place. And hold that down, especially near the top and bottom where you get a little bit of curvature. And just be patient while that sets. And we can, um, while we're holding that down, get our tail out and we'll glue our tail together. That is going to need to be trained a little bit. And we're actually going to, I'm going to use some foam squares to put that on the back here, uh, just to give it a little bit of added dimension. Okay, there we go. That looks good. So we'll grab, grab our tail. I'm going to put glue on this top section here and get that glued to the black shadow area. Okay. There we go. And then while it's while it's setting, we are going to train this a little bit because like I said, the bottom part of this is going to be flush with the very bottom and then the top is going to, it's going to kind of come up like this. So we are going to need to train this a little bit. And actually, you know what? I don't even think we need to use a dowel. I'm just going to, with my fingers very gently, just kind of give it a, a natural curve. You can see it's not flat anymore. It's kind of curved. And I think we may need to curve it a little bit more at the bottom. Let's take a look and see how that fits. There we go. That's good enough. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to form or, or uh, kind of doesn't have to hug that form of the base perfectly. Just as long as just as long as we've kind of uh, well released or eased up. You know, what's, what am I trying to say here? Just as long as we have. 
I can't even think of the word right now. Okay, so this is gonna go right in the center, flush on the bottom, and then just kind of bring it up so it curves up like that. Okay, so there's our doggy's little tail. There we go. That looks nice. Okay. All right, so that section is done, and then that just leaves this section here. And we've got one, we got one more little spot here. Okay. And this one I am going to use my dowel to give it a little bit of a curve. You see how that kind of curves. Okay. And we're kind of, I guess the word I was looking for was we're releasing or, uh, boy, I've used this term so many times. I've just come up with a blank here. I'm still trying to think of it. Okay, so this is gonna, there's little guides here. So make sure that you get them within the markers and hold that down up at the top and then as well as down here so this doesn't come flying off. You want it nice and flush. Essentially we're relaxing the paper fibers because when they come off the uh, come off the press and they dry, they're very stiff. And we're just kind of working that the paper fiber and releasing all that tension to make it more malleable. I'm sure, there's another term that I've used before, but I can't think of it right now. But look at that. Uh, take a look at it from that view. You can see how cute that looks. Got the little doggy tail. Lovely. Okay, so. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the base, and we can begin working on uh, the lid. Okay, so let's do that. And we'll move these out of the way. Got the ears. Okay, so here is our lid, and we'll begin assembling that here in just a second. Okay, so we're on to the lid for our Bow Wow cookie jar. And as I mentioned before, it's gonna be very similar to assembling the base, but it's gonna go a lot quicker since the tabs are smaller. Now, um, you'll notice here that, again, we have a tiny little tab, and it's really up to you whether or not you want to add glue to it. I don't think it's really necessary since we're gonna have panels going over it, so I'm gonna skip that one and go to the second one from the top and get that one in place first. And just press and hold that down. Make sure that you've got it nice and aligned right there. Okay, so it should go pretty quick. Tabs are smaller. It's a, a lot less weight for each tab to bear since it is lighter. And everything is in pretty close proximity. So it should go pretty quick. Okay, and I'm doing my best to make sure that that glue is nice and thin and that everything is accurately aligned all the way down. Okay, I got a little bit of glue residue on my thumb. There we go. And we're just gonna do this for all the sections to join everything together. I'm gonna switch positions here. And go like this. And as you can see, this is gonna go a lot faster than the base. So we're more than halfway home here. And there we go. If you have a little bit of glue that pops out, just just wipe it off. Okay, so one section is done. And we can move on to the next section. As I mentioned, this tab here, I did fold it. Just fold it in, get it out of the way. You could skip it and just go on to the second tab. And dab that, make it a little tackier. And it will 
will set a lot faster that way. Get that nice and lined up. And I don't know if you can hear it. <clears throat> it. Sounds like it's raining out there, but I've been doing a lot of watering lately. Had some new plants put in. And it's been so hot here lately. I'm trying to give them plenty of water. Okay, so just going down the line here. Nothing nothing crazy, nothing complex, just taking it one tab at a time. I'll tuck that in, get it nice and lined up like that. There we go, you can see how much faster that's going. And then once we get this together, we're gonna to take the other half, get that joined, and just kind of continue on this with this process here of, of joining all the sections together. And then we've got some panels to put on top of it to give it a nice round appearance. We've got a few spots to put on, uh, a few spots to put on the panels after this is all together. So there's half of it and that's done. Now before we begin, gluing these sections together. Obviously we need to join these two sections together. I'm going to start at the bottom. I think that is probably the easiest route and most accurate. So get your glue on that bottom tab, grab this section and get that nice and lined up. Use the score marks as kind of a visual to ensure that you've got it correctly lined up the score mark here and then obviously this needs to be nice and lined up as well. You we can push that out of the way while we're holding, let me get this gunk off there. While we're continuing to hold that last tab, you can move that out of the way and get that aligned. There we go. Perfect. Pull that out of the way. Get your glue on the next section. And just make sure that you're lining everything up nice and accurate. Okay. And next tab, working our way up. And now you'll notice that these sections here, they do have our little numbering system. And that is just to ensure that when we put our panels down, we put them in the right spots. Okay, so starting to get up to the top here. Again, just make sure that everything is in alignment as accurately as you can get it. Okay, you can move that out of the way. I'm just going to apply glue on these last two tabs here so that I don't have to pull anything else away. Get that nice and lined up. And then this last piece here, and that looks pretty spot on. Okay, now I may want to just pause for a moment just to make sure that Everything has a good hold. Okay, I think that's okay. All right, so now we can work our way back down. And we're gonna skip that tiny little, tiny little nub there. So that's not really doing us much good. And we'll get this aligned here. Now let me go and switch hands here. This might be easier. Move this out of the way. There we go. Whatever you need to do to get your fingers in the most comfortable position to work, just feel free to do that. There's no wrong way to do any of this stuff. Just as long as you get everything lined up as accurately as you can. 
the path or the journey that gets you there is, is up to you. As I've mentioned in the past, uh, this is my first time putting this specific project together. Now it's, I can do that because I've literally made every single project on our site and a lot of the methods and protocols, whatever you want to call them, they overlap, they're, they're very similar. So eventually when you make a, a certain number of project from our, projects from our site, you'll notice that processes are very similar and I'll just get that last one in place here. All right, so moving along here again, now I'm gonna tuck this underneath here so it doesn't get stuck later on. I'm gonna skip that first tab there and just begin with the second one. Get our glue on there. that in place. Now I should have probably moved that out of the way so I can get my finger in there a little bit better. Now this we can't move out of the way. So as we begin to get closer to actually closing this thing up, it may require a little, a little bit of figuring out how to best get your fingers in places. And we may not be able to work on like two tabs at a time without potentially ripping apart the tab that we're currently working on. So the pace may slow down just a tad here and that's okay. So far, it's okay, I'm doing all right. There we go. Wonderful. And then our last one here. And then we'll begin just kind of stitching this whole thing together and making it all one solid piece. And we can move on to our tabs. All right, so let's close this up. And I think I'm gonna start at the top. Make sure that all your tabs are in. Otherwise it may be difficult to, all right, and I'm probably gonna have to work from the inside so you can see the tabs in the inside. You see that top one all the way up there, right there, I'm kind of pointing to it. I'm gonna start with putting glue on that. And you can just put a, a little dot of glue on there. You can see it right there. And then just kind of spread it. And Okay, so we got glue on that first tab. And let's get that connected. Okay, there we go. And again, we are gonna have to work from the inside here. So again, you can see the next tab right there. I'm gonna get my glue on it, just do a little dot, and then I'll just kinda dab it with my finger to spread that glue around the entire tab, and then get that lined up, and just press and hold that in place. As we get closer to the bottom, it'll be a little bit easier <clears throat> since uh, it's closer to the opening, which is fairly large. Okay, so I've got my glue on the next tab there. You can see I'm pointing to it there. I'm just gonna kinda flatten that out a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And get that joined with the neighboring section. There we go. And the next one. There it is, just three more. And then we'll be good to go. And you can see that it's not taking long at all for the glue to set. Well, at least mostly set, not completely, but I'm gonna put glue on two tabs at a time here since it's getting closer to the opening. There we go. And one more here. And then the last one. There we go.
Okay. Okay, so our lid is complete. You can see how nicely that fits on there. And now it's apparent that we have two slits here and that's where our little doggy's ears are gonna go. And again, take a look at the numbering convention here. We've got a one, two, three, a four, five, and a six going all the way around. And we need to make sure that we use the correct panels for each section. Okay, this is piece number one. So you know what, let's start with number one. Let's find side one, this is side one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, kind of like we did with the base, we're gonna start off by gluing one side and then we'll glue the top. Okay, and I think it's best to start at the bottom so that we can get everything nice and lined up with the bottom nice and flush. And then this part here is a little bit more forgiving because we're gonna put a spot on top here that's gonna kind of hide any potential imperfections. So let's start at the bottom here and get glue on just about a half an inch or so of the bottom. I'm gonna spread that out all the way to the very end. Okay, and this is piece number one. Make sure you're aligning it and setting it onto section number one. Okay, get it nice and centered and nice and flush with the bottom. Take a look here and make sure that it's not encroaching over onto the other sections. And we can absolutely use our table for additional leverage to really press that into place. Okay, so that was easy. And then we'll just do glue on, again, about just another half inch or so, and then spread that glue out to the very edge, very tip and then bring that up and press and hold that down. Just like that, very simple. This is gonna go real quick. Okay, but you do wanna be patient and actually you know what you could do too is you can press down from the inside as well to really get that to get that glue to really penetrate into all the little fibers. There we go, okay. So here is section two. Find piece number two, here it is. And I'm gonna get our glue on just this bottom half inch or so. Spread that glue out, nice and thin, all the way to the very bottom. And then again, section two, piece number two. Get that nice and centered, like so. Make sure that it's nice and flush with this section here. We can put that down on our table, press down. That's really gonna help cement it a lot quicker. There we go. And then rock and roll here. Just get that in place. Spread that glue out to the very ends. And just pull that up. And there we go. Just press and hold that down. Make sure that ain't going anywhere. And we can absolutely use our table to help us. There we go, looking good. Okay, so if you're feeling confident at this point, you can absolutely skip ahead or pause me. Um, now, something to note on pieces number three and number five, you wanna make sure that as you're applying this panel, that you get it to match up with the slit on the base structure here so that they line up correctly so that when it comes time to put the little ears on, we don't run into any problems because they need to penetrate both slits and you can see how they line up nicely there. Uh, let's see, yeah, you can see how it's changing from dark to white as I move it over a different color. Okay, so that looks like Looks like I lined it pretty accurately. If it's a smidge off, it's not the end of the world, but we do need about a paper thickness. Uh, it needs to align or overlap accurately, at least for one thickness of paper to slip through there. Okay, so just make sure that that is the case and then get that nice and centered and press and hold that down. And I'm kind of using my finger as leverage here with my finger up on top here. Now you can also, again, use your table as that opposing force. And there we go. Okay. 
And now moving on to number four. And I'm pretty confident to say that we are on the home stretch here. Let me get some of this glue off my finger. All right, piece number four. Make sure that you have side number four. These two shapes or indicators there should match. Remember that the four is the four little hash marks in the shape of a square, essentially, or a circle. Okay, and we got our glue on about a half an inch of the bottom there, making sure it's centered left and right, and then also flush with this little lip here. Using my table, push that in more efficiently, and then get our glue on this little triangular area, spread that out to the edges like so. Pop that on your table and pop that into place. And again, if they don't completely match up perfectly up at the top there, don't lose any sleep over it because we are going to cover that up with a nice little spot and everything will be just fine. Okay, I'm gonna use my table again. All right, so now obviously we need this one here. This is piece number five. Let's get our glue on the bottom here. There we go. And as we're applying this, again, need to make sure that it's centered and flush, but also before we commit to leaving it in this spot, Pull this over and just make sure that it's lining up with the slit. Mine was not, so I had to adjust it a little bit. Now it is. Now we can push this down and let that solidify. That looks good. I'll test that again. Slit is not being obstructed, so that's perfect. Get our glue on this triangular area and pop that in place just like that. Looking good. And it just leaves one more. So far, so good. Even though I'm a cat lover, well, I think they're both. I, I like them both. The dog one, I think, is a little bit cuter. Maybe just because of the ears that we're going to put on. But that's okay. All right, last piece here. I'm not really worried about the numbering system here because... It's the only option we have. Let's paint that glue out to the edges. I'm gonna need a little bit more here, I think. I just didn't get enough there. Okay, and this one, get that nice and centered. There we go. Beautiful. And that fits perfectly, okay. So let's get our glue on the little triangle. Just kind of paint that all the way out to the very tip. And fold that over right into place, perfect. And yeah, there's gonna be some gaps here and there, but that's what happens when you're trying to make something round out of paper. And again, it may also have a little bit to do with the accuracy of your tab gluing when actually creating the base structure. So there's a lot of, a lot of variables involved that will determine the ultimate outcome. But as long as it looks good to you, that's all that really matters, I'd say. Okay, look at that. It's a good size too. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what we got to do next here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to put our collar on. We'll start at the bottom. So the collar is made up of these two pieces here. You'll notice that on one of these, there's a little tab. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to glue the, these together. So go ahead and put some glue on this little tab here. And I'm going to spread that glue out all the way to the very edge. And take and connect these two sections together, just like so. And I'm going to fold it over on top of itself so that I can press down and really 
get it to go. And also, while, I'm, while I have them on top of each other, just make sure that they're in line, okay? If yours is kind of off to the side like that, then maybe you, you didn't get it perfectly lined up here, okay? Now, the idea with the collar here is that, now, one other thing too, before I get ahead of myself, uh, let me see, how does this work? Okay, right, so the front of this, this piece here with the little holes in it needs to terminate on piece number, where are we at here? Okay, so this is actually, this is the front of our dog here. Okay, and you can tell that because we've got some markers here to help you with the positioning of the nose and such. The ears are actually on these two, on the um, back half of the lid. So this piece here, the piece that's gonna have the face on it needs to terminate here. So we're actually, I guess we could probably just start here. No, let's do this. We'll start on the piece on the side next to the front, which is this section here. And I'm just gonna do one section at a time. So if you look, this is section two, and you want to put glue on the section opposite of the side that has the little belt buckle holes on it. Okay, make sure that you get some glue all the way out to the very tip of that, the very edge. And we're beginning to glue this onto section two. And I kind of just dropped it down right at the fold and also just make sure that it's nice and flush with the lip here. Okay, so you see how that's looking. And we can push that down like so. There we go. And we can pull this back. And of course, I did fold this already. Yours is gonna, you're gonna need to fold yours. And start applying glue to the next section, like so. And bring it over. Just make sure that the areas where the folds are align with the seams on the actual structure here. Okay, so there's the second section in place. I'm gonna press that down on my table to speed things along. Pull this back, oops, and apply our glue to the next section, like so. Bring it over, it should match up with the fold and the seam. Make sure that it's flush here. Give that a little press and then you can put that down on your surface and give it a really good press. There we go. Fold that back, apply glue to the next section. Fold it over, make sure it matches up with the seam. Keep it nice and flush here. Give it a couple presses. Put that down on your surface and give it a good press. There we go. Fold that back. Next section. Fold it over. And that should match up again with that seam. Make sure it's nice and flush here. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. I can always Always just, but you know what, that worked out perfectly because it's exactly where it needs to be. So did a pretty good job there. All right, we're gonna put glue here. Now a tiny bit of this is actually gonna be sticking off and it won't be glued down. So you wanna take your glue up to about, well, definitely after this part here and just about there. Okay, and just fold that over. Again, just make sure that's nice and flush with the lip and there we have it. Okay, and pretty much perfect where we didn't need the glue. Put that down on my surface. Press that down. Okay, there we go. Okay, so final steps here. Well, we've got this little piece of gold that we need to put into place here for the little buckle. So let's get that on. And then we've got two spots to put on the sides, one on top to kind of cover up the very top of the lid. Okay, so you can see where that goes. Just get that right into place like so. Okay. All 
right, let's find these two spots, okay? And this guy here is gonna go on the left side. You can see the little markers and exactly where it needs to go. And you want that to be nice and flush with the collar. So let's get that in place. Like so. There we go. Just kind of nudge that right up against the collar. Press that down. There we go. And then we'll work our way to the other side and get the other spot in place. There we go. And you'll notice that there also is a series of little markers to help you with the placement of that. There we go. I guess while we're at it, you can put his cute little mouth in place as well. And his nice red tongue. And we'll finish it off with the ears. Which is pretty simple. Okay, so here is his mouth. Now we have this little pink piece for his tongue. So let's get some glue on that. Get that nice and centered. That looks pretty good. I think my dog's barking over there. The paper's moving. It sounds like a little squeak. Okay, now on the front here, you'll notice that there are some markers here. And you want to position this like that. So let's get our glue on this entire piece here. And throw a couple little dots right on the very edges or ends of the mouth to make sure that that doesn't get ripped off on accident. And again, just use the little guide there. It's gonna, this, the nose is gonna fit right there. And then obviously visually you wanna make sure that it is aligned correctly so it looks nice and the orientation is correct. Press that all down into place. Okay, that looks good. And then we're gonna draw in, I'm just gonna use a marker to draw in a few little dots there. And we'll find this spot now. This spot is gonna go right here like so. Now we're gonna to need, to, to need to train this so that it hugs these surfaces nicely. I'm gonna start by just kind of training. Oh, that's what that is. I'm gonna start by training just the little bottom section here. I'm gonna put it on here and see how it fits and see what other areas need a little bit of training. I think everything's okay except for this section here. So I'm gonna take my dowel and just kind of curl it a little bit. And get some of that glue residue off and see how that fits. That fits pretty good. The whole thing doesn't need to be completely flat you could go crazy trying to achieve that, but as long as it's covering up that top, that's all we're trying to achieve here. So get your glue on this whole piece, work those edges so it doesn't go anywhere. And again, just use those markers to guide you. Wait a second here, where is... There we go, just like that, okay? And then just kind of press down in various areas and just be patient while that sets because there's a lot of resistance here and these paper fibers will want to bounce back and be flat like they were when they were produced. But we're gonna shape them like so. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna keep holding that for a moment and then all that's really left is the ears, which are very simple. We're gonna do some training on the ears to make them floppy and we'll call it a day. 
and there we go. Okay, so here are the ears. Now I've already taken one of them and you can see what I did here. I just kind of trained it to make it a little floppy. So it started off like this. So what I, what I did was I took, I took my dowel and I just put it on my table. I grabbed this end of the ear and just lifted it up and you can make it as floppy as you want. Okay. I think that is pretty good. And you can also just kind of adjust and nudge things with your fingers too. Okay. So let me make sure I'm doing this right. The larger little earlobe here, that's going to be on the left hand side. So make sure you get the right ear in the right spot and just pop it in here. Just make sure that it looks right and that it looks consistent before we glue everything down and you can see how cute that looks. I'm going to fold this and really crease it so that it droops a little bit more. So before you actually glue everything down, just make sure you're happy with the appearance. I think that looks great. Okay. So we'll do one at a time here. If you take a look, so we've got the, um, well, we've got the, this little tab going through the slit. Now, one other thing that I did too, was I kind of put my dowel in the middle of this and I folded it just ever so slightly just to curve it because this tab needs to be glued onto a curve. So we'll pop that in there. That's a lot better. Okay. And then you can see the tab in there. So what we're going to do, is just going to move it back, throw a little bit of glue on that tab like so, and then fold it over onto the inside of this section here and just hold that in place until it's set. There's going to be some resistance there. So you definitely want to be patient and hold it until it is really fully set. Otherwise it's going to come off. And I think that is good. And there's our nice little floppy ear. And you can see how that looks there. That looks great. Okay. So we'll do the same thing with the other ear. I already folded this one. There we go. Looks good. You can see that tab there. I'll just throw a little bit of glue right on that tab and fold that up against the inside. Just continue to hold that until you're sure it is completely set. There we go. And now you can either a draw in the eyes. If you want, you can cut out some circles. Uh, we're actually using some black pearls for our eyeballs. Super cute. Okay. And let me get my black pearls out of here. I'll show you how I do that. And then you can also just take a look at the final photo of our doggy on the website to see what else we did as far as embellishments go. I've got a scrap piece of paper here. I'm just going to throw a little dot of glue on there. I've got my pick me up tool. Here is my little black pearl. I'm going to dunk it in that glue and you want to put the eyeballs. Obviously you want to keep them symmetrical. And right about there, let's see. Yeah, pretty much in between the center of the nose, kind of like right here. And I may want to nudge that up a little bit. His eyes might be a little bit too close to his nose. Whoops. That looks good. Okay. Grab my other black pearl. There we go. And then Obviously, do your best to make his face as symmetrical as you can by putting his eye. And I'm going to move him a little bit over. There you go. There's our doggy. Ruff, ruff. Okay. And then um, with just a marker or a pencil or whatever you feel comfortable with, I'm just going to take and do some dots here and I'm just going to, instead of trying to make a perfect circle, I'm just going to hit it 
I'm just going to dot it a few times to create the illusion of it. Almost kind of like in a bowling pin formation. If you had the head pin, the two pins, the one, two, and three pins. So, you know, I kind of messed up there a little bit. The spot's a little bit off, but hey, you know what? It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there we go. Okay. And that'll do it. So that should fit on there nicely. There's our cute little doggy, all ready to go. I think it came out great. And actually, I don't know how I feel about which one I like better, but either way, whoever you give this to, or even if you make it for yourself, they're going to enjoy it. And I'm sure you will too. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please take a moment and visit our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button while you're there. Hit the little bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new video. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it. So with the 20,000 plus other dreamers, uh, so head over to your Facebook, do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can type in this URL and take you there directly and, uh, and join us. Uh, a lot of inspiration, a lot of great projects and ideas um, on a daily basis. So either way, happy dog days of summer, and I look forward to crafting with you again.